it's your girl Shells, and welcome back to another episode of Mama Drama Podcast. We've got your lovely Leash panelist, and we're joined by a lovely guest, Zoe. Hi. Hi. Thank, thank you for inviting me on. No, thank, thank you, you for coming. Thank you for coming. She was like, yes, I'll be there. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's go. And then I went out last night and then I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what have I I'll let you down. And then yeah. literally I was like, I hope she doesn't drop out. You know when you podcast and then people like cancel last minute and stuff like and that. My heart feels, yeah. But yeah, no, she's here. She's with us live in the flesh, guys. Make sure you check out Drip Punch. They are collabing with us again for this episode. Yeah, go on, Leash. What's the flavors this given? This one is pineapple and ginger. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the next one. That's really Caribbean y, you know? Really Caribbean y. It's giving Caribbean. But it's I giving love it. tropical island. But this one's tropical fruits. There we go, yeah. tropical fruits. <laughs> About, we've got actually melon berry yeah. today. We've got melon berry. We're going to try that one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so. Those are the other flavors, guys. Make sure you check them out on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you do not miss a video. And let's just get straight into the episode. Yes. How are you today, girl? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, freezing cold. Yeah, Winter yeah. is here at the moment, but yeah, I'm good. You're I'm good. Going, yeah. Lovely. How are you, girls? Mm. <sighs> Cold. Yeah, I'm here, surviving, surviving just life. Cold, yeah. It's cold. No, it is cold. It's cold. Winter has come. Rant. Winter's come, and it literally comes so quickly with vengeance. Like, Woof! And it's like, wow, the heat. Yeah, yeah. I was not ready for like. Honestly, I'm not prepared for winter. Yeah. At all. I think because October was kind of all right, weren't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it kind of logs me into a false like, oh, it's still yeah, it's summer. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 This is. Yeah. This is. Winter in it. Proper. Proper. I'm yeah. chapping. It is chapping. <laughs> for real. That's what it is. No, nah, and you know when you, you look out the window and then you see all the frost on the, the roof. That's what I saw this morning. Because obviously I don't live in London. So that frost that I saw, I was like, yeah, I'm wearing my long coat. I was yeah. gonna do the cool, the cool level like Zoe's got on there. I was like, no, nah, oh, my long no, coat. No, no, I'm not gonna lie. I think we both wore long coats. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's, nah, too, it's cold. too cold. I go everywhere in my car. Yeah. I cannot go in it. But yeah. yeah, I'm scraping ice off again this morning. Oh mate. Mm, yeah, long. Not the greatest mm, ever. Long ting. So guys, today's ep is basically about, I don't know what to call it, like body shaming, women, like how we're viewed online. And I don't mind sharing this because we have some rude comments, okay? I'm going to yeah, address it. Very some rude. very rude comments. Uh, start, just go off for it. Go. I'm just going to go off it. Yeah. Go, go, yeah. yeah. Go Literally, off. okay, I know I'm not a slim ting, all right? I know I'm not a, a size zero, whatever they call it. But there were some very rude comments off the cuff of me expressing my views about what a man should and should not do. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of those, obviously, their fake profiles there are a lot of older men like they're giving uncle you could be my dad uncles, okay yeah. a lot of uncles in the comments like commenting on appearance and you would want your woman in the gym and what are you trying to say can i just say yeah. something on that note though yeah i felt like it was men that couldn't or wouldn't or are not able to articulate themselves mm. in a manner that they should be able to because they were hurt and offended mm. about certain comments. So the first thing they went for is let me just talk about how you look. Yeah. My friend, let's talk about how you look. Because if it was yeah. one of those things, it could be a back and forth. Yeah, it's yeah. always the go-to though, isn't it? It's yeah. always the first thing anyone will do is go for your appearance. Yeah. It, it's such an easy thing to target. Like, mm. oh, we're well, overweight. Like I've had nasty comments as well. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like I... If it's coming from a, a fake page, if it's coming from a burner account, I'm just like, whatever. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. even say it with your own name and face to mm. it. So, like, brush it off, whatever. But more time, it's people that just really have nothing better to do. And they're mm. so angry. Like, why are you so angry and upset mm -hmm. to go out of your way to shame a woman for mm. how she looks? Thank mm -hmm. you. And, like, we're not online saying that we are fitness models. Like, yeah. Me personally, I don't I don't profess to be an athlete. Yeah. So for you to tell me about my body shape or my body size or how I look, I'm not coming online saying that I'm a health guru. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if I was, then by all means you can come to me and say, You're overweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're not healthy. So how are you talking about healthy life and gym and whatever? Mm -hmm. But I'm not. Mm -hmm. So it's not relevant. Yeah. Mm. Like make it relevant. Make what you're saying make sense. No, yeah. I agree. I feel like because if you say something that is, and I don't want to bring this back to the men app here, but if you say anything remotely to do with a guy online and men do not like it or some men do not like it, 
they will then say their rebuttal is that they expect women to look a certain way yeah. and you don't look that way. So that's why I'm going to get on to you. But I'm, babe, I'm not your cup of tea. Yeah. I weren't made for you. Yeah. Like, mm. you are certainly not my cup of tea. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And if we were to do a thing like see face to face, we'll know who's really good looking and who's not. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And that's not to blow my own trumpet. Because yeah. obviously everyone's got their type. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows yeah. what they're attracted yeah. to. Who is in the eye of the beholder. A hundred percent. So this is where this app has come from. I just think it's really, um, I think it's rude actually that women come online and people start talking about their body or their appearance. And don't get me wrong, I might do it here and there. But that's if there's been maybe surgical enhancements and they're not enhancing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not to me. <laughs> not to me. Yeah. I'm a natural body babe. The only thing, and we can talk about this actually. Have you ever got any like work done or anything? So I, I do beauty myself as well. Yes. As the online this thing. Can you see the segue? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so over the years, I was having quite a lot of fillers. Okay. Um. And recently I actually dissolved my lips because okay. I realised that I was having like a bit of a like dysmorphia in terms of I'm looking at myself thinking my lips are small when they mm-hmm. was actually massive. Yeah. And um, I, I just think I saw a video of myself. I looked at a video back and I was like, wow, mm-hmm. like this, this isn't cute anymore. So I actually dissolved my filler and okay. then refilled them to like a natural healthy amount. Yeah. Like a tiny little amount. Um, so yeah, I I've had like a few bits and pieces done, but nothing major. Major, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about, about you, Leish? Team Natural. Oh, oh, love we it. love that, but yeah, no, nothing. I, I'm and do you know what? I don't think I would ever do it. To be yeah. fair, mm. I've got people around me that be like, yeah, I'm getting Botox, so I'm getting this and that, and I suppose because I don't feel like I need it, then I don't I don't do it. So mm. I don't and I don't think I would do it if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. That's just a someone else wants to do it, that's, that's your prerogative, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. to me, it's a no, it's natural, babe. I mean, I've never gone and said this online, but I have had filler in my lips. Mm. I was going to say, guess where, but my lips, obviously. Why? 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 Um, for me, I don't think, I wouldn't say I'm an insecure person. Like, I don't look in the do mirror. Do you have filler in them now? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's still a little bit in there, but I only had it like, uh, what, once, twice. I've had it done three times, actually. Um, and I don't do it like top it up every six months that, like, you mm. know, people go and get top. I don't, I literally do it once for that year and then I'm done. I'm not yeah. going back and forth. No, 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 it's good. Um, but for me, it was a thing where I was just like, my lips are thin and they are thin. I've got a thin top lip. Okay. It was non-existent. It's not. No. I did not know how my man was lips in my lips. Okay. <laughs> lips in your face. <laughs> he was lips was in thin. your face. He was lips in my face and my gums, child. Okay. It wasn't a nice sight. I don't know how he is. But um, yeah, I was just like, okay, cool. It's trending. And I'm one of those people. If I want to do something, I'm going to just I go remember do I was it. talking about this though. Yeah. I was trying to talk her out of it. You was trying to talk me out of it. And I was I like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Like, everyone's getting it done. I can't see any repercussions. Like, your, your face is not blown up to the left or whatever. Like, you're not you're not in hospital it's fine like it's just a little procedure and I went I done it and then I was like oh that wasn't so bad I can see how people get addicted yeah it can get addicted why is it so explain that element to me and obviously I wouldn't choose to have Botox uh wouldn't fillers in my lips because, you don't need them babe because yeah, it would I would look <laughs> crazy mm. could you imagine <laughs> no, yeah, I just, exactly <laughs> So explain to me, like, because you guys have had it done before, like, what's the addiction element to it? And um, you spoke about body dysmorphia and stuff yeah. like that, because I think a lot of women suffer from body dysmorphia. So when you're doing these things, how does that then impact? And obviously for yourself as well, because you still get it done, even though you don't get it done that frequently, you mm-hmm. still choose to get it done. So Yeah, so for me, um, as a patient, I think I was initially go in and then you get very used to how you look again Mm -hmm. so the size that you've gone up to becomes the new norm Mm -hmm. and then you start it is it is a a type of dysmorphia you're then looking in the mirror going oh I just need a little top up and for me it was becoming a bit of a cycle where Mm -hmm. I was going quite regularly like he was just saying like he wasn't going every six I was going every six months and getting another little half a mil in Mm. and and it was getting a little bit out of control and then I started actually I trained myself to do it um and I was all my all, almost like looking at myself like mm, what am I doing here like mm-hmm. and then when I started treating other people and I could see their dysmorphias it kind of made me really aware of my own mm. so I was having girls come to me that had like six mils in their lips and wanted another two and I'd 
I was, I'm an advocate of natural enhance, enhancements mm-hmm. and little tweaks rather than let's change ha- our whole face. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Like, I walked in and looked at you and I did not think you had your lips done. Like, okay. you look natural. And yeah, for yeah. me, if you're going to do anything like that, you should be looking at more of a natural enhancement rather than a complete change mm. of who you are and what you look like. Um, so I personally don't do the really overinflated unnatural thing for anybody mm-hmm. if anyone can't a lot of my clients are mature women that just okay. want to get more of their youthful glow fresh face look back mm-hmm. so it will only be a tiny amount of filler that you need to place in specific places just to give them a little bit of a plump because we do lose fat and collagen as we age and one of the first sort of areas that go are like the upper face mm-hmm. just put a little bit of filler in their cheeks and they they look like so well they just look like they've had a really great sleep and a good skincare regime mm-hmm. that's what i go for more than the really plastic look okay i'm not an advocate of the plastic look mm, that's interesting because i was thinking that now i will answer your question i was thinking that now though there are a lot because literally you see it on tiktok like your beauty um like follow me to get my to do my treatments whatever mm-hmm. it might be even on youtube like people go they get their filler get their nails done go do this go do that get injections in their hips bare stuff are happening now and it's just more like accepted a lot of people are doing it it's like out Mm -hmm. there and it's just like the norm so I would have thought maybe you would have had like maybe younger clients as well that would yeah I do have some younger ones I do have some younger clients but again when they come to me I'm always on the I prefer to treat people naturally Mm -hmm. and in small steps if someone says to me I want to go and get my lips done for example Mm -hmm. I'll say to them You've got really thin lips. Maybe try half a mil first and get used to that. And then if that's enough, then great, you can stop. If not, then you can come back for a little top up. But Mm -hmm. it's a money making industry, right? The beauty industry is all targeted for money. So they sell us um, a a version of what beautiful is. So the big Mm -hmm. lips became a trend. And the beauty industry made a lot of money off of people wanting big lips. Mm -hmm. So no one was saying stop. You know, like there's aesthetics businesses that were inflating people's lips over and over again because they're getting paid. Like Mm. ultimately they didn't really care about people and their mental well-being as well. Um, It is very addictive. It is addictive. Mm -hmm. And I think some people just stop knowing where to stop. Where to draw the line. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, there's a difference. So I just always wanted a natural plump. I didn't want to go overboard with it because I was like, no, you are going to tell. If you know me, yeah, (laughs) you're going to look at me. As soon as I walked through the door, and this is when the swelling went down, I was like, what the hell have you done to your lips? (laughs) (laughs) If you know me, (laughs) you will know that I've done something. If you don't know me, you wouldn't notice. And she was like, wow, you've really gone and done that. I was like, I I told you I was going to do it. I'm one of those people, like I said, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go and do it. Nothing's going to change my mind. Um, But where I drew the line was, okay, I could see why get addicted to it and stuff like that but I was like I don't want to go to the extreme where I no longer recognize what my natural face was like without Mm -hmm. filler Mm -hmm. and then if I continue doing it and let's just say something happens am I ever gonna want to like how am I gonna go back am I still gonna look like me am I gonna feel insecure now that I don't have it so I was having all of those questions but I was just like you know what once a year is good enough for me like even this year, I don't think I'm going to be going back to go and get it done. I'm good. Like, I'm okay with how it is or whatever. So, yeah, and I've not thought of anything else um, to do right now. I mean, I've always said to myself, if I was going to do any type of surgery, I would get my breast done. Mm-hmm. Because I've always just thought, what's the point of having breasts then? They're not there. <laughs> they are Guys, there. They're You've there, but them. they're just not there. And as I've gotten bigger over the years as in my hips have spread more like I'm a bit thicker now I'm like why is the breast not matching the rest of the energy of my body this is how I talk like what's going on like why am I still giving little flapjacks do you get what (laughs) and no but this is how I talk about myself right to myself Mm. so if anyone comes to me I can handle it because I really already know what I'm insecure about right exactly Um, but that's the only thing but for me I'm quite scared in that respect like I've had operations and I'm not trying to put myself in that vulnerable healing stage 
um, not knowing whether it could go well and I like it or regret it or whatever. So I'd rather just stay away and I just carry on with my flapjacks. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? <laughs> but I I don't know how people go back and back for like multiple surgeries. And we've mm. all seen and heard of like, even what's his name? That guy that was on, what's it called? Is Tawi. it DC? No, oh. not Tawi. DC Young Fly. Is it? Not him. Yeah, it is him. It is him his and partner. his partner. Who did the oh, mummy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mummy 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 makeover. makeover. With yeah. like a small baby. She was like quite a yeah. fresh baby. Like she's not long given birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then she obviously passed away. Passed away. Mm. So it's just like, it's actually very serious thinking about it. If you're going to let someone open up your body. Yeah, because it's an operation at the end of the day, isn't it? If they're yeah. doing a boob job or even they're doing a bum lift, they have to put you down under sedation. And put, being sedated is a risk within itself, hence why you have an anaesthetist yeah, yeah. to monitor to make sure your heart rate yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So I do think it's a it's a massive thing, but I just don't think people in their head think of it as a massive thing that they're doing. It's become normalised, hasn't yeah. it? So surgery now is like you can pay a few grand, get off to Turkey, get off to Prague, wherever, mm-hmm. and have surgery Whereas before it was more unobtainable. Mm. It was hard to be able to afford it. Um, My thing with surgery is, look, I don't judge anyone that wants to have surgery. Absolutely not. And I think some girls look amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm currently going through a fitness journey myself. I'm dieting, I'm exercising, I'm working out in the gym. I'm not at my goal yet. Mm -hmm. When I do get to my goal, if I look in the mirror and I really can't shift like the mum time or whatever... Mm -hmm then would I have surgery? Yeah, maybe I would. Mm. Maybe I would actually do that. But I'm going to go through all the steps I can first to try and achieve it naturally, healthily, with diet, with exercise. Mm -hmm. Some things you can't change, right? Let's be honest. We can't change loose skin. You can't change the the fact that one breast might be tiny and one might be huge. Mm -hmm. People have these, these issues with their bodies that they can't, they can't fix in the gym. So when people sit online and go, just go to the gym and work it's out. It's not that simple, isn't it? It's yeah. not that easy for everybody. Some people have genuine... I always relate it back to this, and you might laugh, girls, right? But <laughs> I always say, if you had a baby that was born with ears that stuck out really badly, would you take your baby to get them pinned back? No, of course not, innit? That's their ears. I would. A lot of people do. Really? Yeah, people how get many, their, uh, their kids. Yeah, how and many it, children do you yeah, see yeah. walking... And I mean really, really sticking out. A lot of babies are born with ears that really stick out. I would get them pinned back. And most people get them pinned yeah. back. You know what? I just never never occurred to me you know <laughs> that I'll have a child that has some little Dumbo ears look but, at you calling them Dumbo yeah, imagine them going exactly to school I'm sorry I'm not putting it. you through that yeah not but the now you said they're really bad then mm-hmm. it's different but then even then I would think oh man am I gonna do this on physical I don't know I'd really have to have a conversation with myself about why am I doing it what's yeah. my pull and push factors into why do I feel the need to do that to my child? Because my child can do that as they get older. But then you're probably thinking, well, I'm going to save a lot of misery. And bullying because, and yeah, stuff. Because yeah, because you can eradicate all of that and just go and yeah. sort of pin your ears back. See, most people I ask that question to will say, yeah, of course I would. Of course I'd get their ears pinned back. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't I? That's still a cosmetic procedure. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're going to give the grace to a child to say, that's really going to cause them a lot of emotional distress. They're going to be bullied or ridiculed. Why don't we give that grace to us as adults if somebody has a deformity or something? You know, like people have things that maybe aren't perfect, but I'm talking about if you have like one breast really small, one really large, if you have um, a really crooked nose, you might have had it broken. Who are we to sit there and say to someone, you shouldn't go and get that sorted out? Oh, but I believe that someone should. should, Yeah, yeah. because it's something that's wrong, isn't it? Something that you feel is wrong. Like you said, they're, they're significant things. A crooked nose, if you broke your nose, or if you're just born with a crooked nose, mm. then yeah, by all means, like you should be trying to get your nose yeah, fixed. Yeah. And I think the same with weight loss. If people mm. lose a lot of weight, mm-hmm. they do really well, and then they're left with loads of excess skin mm, yeah. or sagging. Yeah. I can understand why you've done all that hard work to now still have no confidence to yeah. go and wear a bikini it's, it's like, or, yeah. you know, it's like let real. them do their thing. Yeah. I just fear for people that have a nice body already and then go and have multiple surgeries mm. afterwards because they all come with risk at the end of the day. That's what I am fearful for and mm-hmm. that people are becoming so, like this perfect body stereotype yeah, that yeah. doesn't really exist anyway mm. is like, what are people going to put themselves through to get to that? To get to That's that. what concerns me. Yeah. I agree because 
I was watching something and basically, obviously, we know Kim K and the Kardashians. I, just, I, think, I was just thinking of Kardashians in my head because and they, they set a whole, that. they set that whole kind of, let's all get our BBLs done, bums yeah. done. Even though they weren't admitting, they've still kind of not, they'll still never admit it. Now, yeah. yeah, they won't admit it. But now, that whole thick sh- as a schnicker look was in. Mm-hmm. Now all the girls are getting that look. Mm-hmm. They don't want it anymore. So now they've reverted back. Look how skinny or slender Kim is now. And like Chloe. You, and Chloe has lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Kendall's always been slim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kylie's even joined as well. Yeah. And they're the trendsetters of like the fashion industry, yeah. what young girls look up to, blah, blah, blah. So now the look is to maybe have a little bit of ass. But you're skinny yeah. everywhere yeah, else. I mean, your arms need to be thin. You need Literally, to be bone, bone, like cage. yeah. So on that, right? So I do, I do look into like beauty trends and stuff quite a lot. Because, okay, just because of my background in health, but also because of my background in beauty. Yeah, and now also because I create content online, so I do research in these things. And I was looking at um, so the beauty trends, right? They're controlled by the fashion industry media, Hollywood, Mm -hmm. beauty industry, they all make multiple, multiple billions of pounds every year from our insecurities and our self-worth issues, Mm -hmm. right? So back in like the 1910s, we started out with this really corseted look. Everyone was wearing corsets to the point that they could not breathe. Mm -hmm. Their bodies were getting like serious health problems because they were corseting themselves so tight that their intestines were displacing and all sorts of stuff like that. So this has been going on for a mm. long time, mm. 1910s, there wasn't all the cosmetic surgery, but women were using corsets to create the hourglass figure that we know is like one of the most aesthetically pleasing figure types. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From then it went to, um, it went to like a super skinny era where everyone wanted to be like boy shaped, basically. Mm-hmm. Everyone wanted to be really straight, like in the twenties had the flappy girls, went to this really thin type. Then we go to like the 50s, the Marilyn Monroe era where like the hourglass has come back again. Mm. We go back to the 80s and then like the 60s to 80s, really skinny again. Mm. Like everyone wanted to be stick thin. Then in the 90s, we had like the boom of like the Pamela Anderson era where everyone wanted to be really skinny but have huge boobs. Mm -hmm. That was the trend. From there, it's then gone to this, say 2010s onwards. We've had this Kardashian era. Let's let's Mm -hmm. just call it like Mm -hmm. the Kardashian era, right? You've got to be... Thick, slim fit, mm-hmm. huge bum. Now that is, as you can see through all these be- beauty trends and all these different ages, we go from skin, skinny to thick, skinny to thick, curvy to straight, and it flips backwards and forwards. Mm. Like every 10, 15 years, that mm. trend flips on itself. So we are coming into like a natural, because the beauty industry stops making money when we keep doing the same thing, right? Mm, okay. If we keep doing the same thing, the beauty industry. It kind of just becomes we become numb to it. So it's like, what, what, what's are we all the new go thing? Spend yeah, what we're going to do? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Right? So every 10, 15 years, Hollywood goes and changes its look. Okay. The beauty industry changes its look, and they all these fashion designers they all turn around and go, yeah, that that big bum era's over now. So let's find something else. And like you just said, we're moving into this new era where it's going to be thin with a big mm-hmm. bum. So people that have gone out and paid thousands of pounds for surgery to get the latest trend are now going to be scrambling to go and get money. Where mm-hmm. do you stop? Yeah. How, like, yeah, how do you mad. keep up with something that changes mm. on such a regular basis? Mm. Like the lips. Mm. A few years ago, massive lips were like trending. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah, 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 and yeah. then they and then they became frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, because everyone's like removing their filler. I mean, I'm gonna still keep mine in. <laughs> <laughs> Because the thin lip ain't for me, child. So, so is is the big lips not in fashion no more? Or it no, is? no, everyone's been no. removing their filler. Yeah. Okay. Molly May got her filler removed. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of people have been removing and saying, oh, I'm going back. I, I still feel like there's a tiny little bit in there because. you got, The thing is, so I dissolve rem- my lips, right? Yeah. And you can't dissolve them without refilling them somewhat. somewhat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, my, so I always had big lips anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, naturally, I have big lips. Mm-hmm. And when I dissolved my filler, they literally dissolve to nothing. Like okay. they really dissolve. The fi- the dissolver itself isn't great for your mm-hmm. skin. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, without refilling them, you then yeah. look awful. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah, yeah. Like no, what have I done now? That like, I really regretted actually dissolving <laughs> it at first. Um, but you kind of have to put a little bit back in. You mm. can't not because mm-hmm. you just look. Imagine like. They just look a bit wrinkly. Yeah, like a deflated balloon. A deflated yeah, balloon. yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's why we never do it. 
whole touch gels. Oh, no. literally. I'm going to be there. Shout out to the session. <laughs> but you have to know what you're doing. That's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. Like, if you research who you're going to and you know that you're going to someone that's qualified, insured, like, trained regularly so they keep refreshing their knowledge, they've got good health and safety protocols, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, then... You're pretty much safe, you know? Like, if something goes wrong, then they know how to fix it. Mm. They'll be covered if, like, you needed to end up in hospital. You'd get insured Insurance, for that. Insurance, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot, still a lot of backstreet people mm -hmm. about doing stuff. So, I think it's just all about making sure you choose someone safe mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you go and put your face in someone's hands, literally. Yeah. No, literally. Yeah. That's, yeah. It, when you think, when you say it like that, it is scary. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, what mm. am I doing? But... Yeah, it is what it is at this point, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like so many people are doing it. Um, th there is a look. Like, if you guys are on TikTok, you'll see what's going on and stuff like that. What do you think about men getting surgery? I don't think we can sit here and judge them mm. for doing what we advocate women should have the choice to do. Because I wouldn't want women to be told they can't. So I don't think we should tell men they can't. Mm -hmm. It depends what surgery we were talking about, though. Like, There's a few. What, what I don't know, Michelle, don't know you're looking with? at me because I'm thinking whilst you're speaking. Oh, men be getting their hair transplanted now. I, I classify that as a surgery. Yeah, it's a surgery. It's yeah. surgery. Hair transplants. Turkish teeth. Turkish teeth. Uh, no, nah, to be honest, my plumber, his teeth were amazing yesterday. I forgot to ask him where he got his teeth done because um, I was like, I just want a little bit. Of... <laughs> That's surgery, mate. That is surgery. Yeah, Turkish but... teeth. His teeth, were they were good. Six pack. Six pack. That's what Drake, I was going to mention. Drake this, done it. Um, the six pack. The six pack. Apparently, um, Kanye done liposuction. Yeah. Yeah, because he got a bit fluffy. Oh. <laughs> so he decided to take... I ain't even trying to be rude, but he 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 obviously wasn't happy with what he looked mm. like over a period of time because he wasn't really that size mm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I'm connecting this to his mental health. health yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you watch a documentary, you'll understand Kanye and his mental health. Fluctuate. And obviously, yeah, and he must obviously felt like there was a need for him to do it. And he did liposuction. I don't, with weight loss surgery, I suppose like that is something you can do in the gym, though. You can do with Kanye diet. definitely could have just with, done and gym. And with the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think for men, naturally, it's easier for them to lose weight because they've got more muscle mass than women, right? Yeah. They carry less fat anyway. They have higher metabolism. Mm -hmm. So for men, I feel like it's probably a bit easier for them to, to shred and to get a bit more ripped, you know? Mm -hmm. You see men, don't you? They go to the gym for a couple of months. And, and then you're like... like Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they look, yeah, they look really different. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be but a whole like, different story. Yeah, literally. Yeah, Hold on, yeah. but do you? I don't know. I've got views on this, yeah, because oh. I think if a man is going to get sur um, surgical enhancements or do surgery for weight loss, I actually don't rate it. Mm. Like I actually just wow. don't rate it. She said that with chest. No, I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be honest with it. I don't rate it because of literally just what you just said. Yeah, I th yeah. I think do it is the hard work. Men. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? How are you doing it? For so it's okay for women. Now I'm gonna be you shells. It's you okay why. for women to it's do okay it. It's okay for us because, but it's not okay for the men. Hormonal. Men can you hear this? Hormonal oh. changes yeah, in a yeah. woman, especially when she has a child. Yeah. yeah. So where she will store fat will be subjective to actually the hormone change in her body. Yeah. So therefore the difference in trying to work out and the rest of it and what you can achieve and what you can't achieve, with all the different stuff that you will do is going to be differential. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I'm saying I'm not going to rate it. I'm honestly, I'm not going to, when I heard that Drake did a little six pack thing and if it's true or not, I was like, really? He's got the money to pay for a dietitian, I was gonna say, nutritionist, okay. a PT to literally mm -hmm. follow him around wherever he's touring and literally make his food for him. This is what you need to eat today. Mm -hmm. Here's your macros, exactly. here's your macros, here's your protein. <laughs> yeah. No carbs. Go off. Like, and do gym. That. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He could have done that, you know? Like, it's lazy. That's just lazy. It's lazy. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. that's why I'm saying I just wouldn't rate it. Mm. Like, I just wouldn't rate but it. But then he's got the money to just go and have the surgery know, and he can reverse it if he wants to. He's got disposable funds. I don't rate you it. You don't rate it. For me, yeah, <laughs> I'm not a gym babe in it. 
I went to the gym. I had a knee injury from dancing at my friend's wedding. And then I went to the gym and then <laughs> I just exacerbated that injury on that flipping rowing machine. Yeah. And then from there, that was my excuse just not to return. You tapped out. I tapped out. Like, I don't mind going to the gym, but I'm just like, I need some real serious motivation. If someone put money in front of the treadmill <laughs> and was dangling <laughs> the money and then whatnot, I would be running on that treadmill, catching that fun. Let me just say something though, yeah? Yeah. Your bae. Yeah. Is a gym bae. Absolutely. He loves. He, he loves gym. the gym. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Why yeah. is he not your motivation when you look at him? Yeah, I think... look at him and I say, you look good. <laughs> 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 I love that for you, bae. <laughs> and let me just sit here. I'll eat for the both of us. <laughs> There has to be, you know, the, the balance. You gotta strike a balance, yeah. You be the gym one, you be the one that every, when we go on holiday, oh, your your man's ripped. And I'm just like, oh yeah, I know he but looks don't you, amazing. Don't, but don't you feel the pressure on yourself? <laughs> no, zero. You don't. I told you, let me I'll drink for us. If you're not gonna drink, like his life has literally, and I'm sorry, babe, I know you don't know how to be spoken about, but literally, like his whole life has changed into like the way he eats, like cooking, proteins, meals. I have to think about what I have to cook. Mm -hmm. We were at some point, I was measuring the calorie, the yeah, measurements yeah, of the, the food, the scales. Stuff. Yeah. And it was a lot of work. It was causing arguments in my household. But obviously he's gotten where he wants to get to and he's happy with it and he's maintained it. As long as you're happy in it mm -hmm. and it helps his mental health and he's happy with that, that's a really good thing for him. Mm -hmm. But for me, going to the gym, I don't like the men looking at me. I just want to work out in peace, yeah. like, and just act like I know what I'm doing without really knowing what I'm doing, work out my little sweat, and then go about my business. But I just feel like there's just so much pressure with it. It's just for me, the anxiety of even going to the gym, the signing up, mm. knowing the money's being deducted from my account, but then I'm not going. But then mm. when I do go, people are looking at me like, why is she even here? Because I wouldn't say that I'm not toned. I'm a toned babe. I just got some... Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't mind sharing this. This mum belly that just came with my child. And then after my child, I was eating. And then I have my thyroid issues. So there's health issues as well in it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just like, it is what it is. This is the body that I have now. Let me just embrace it. And then I'm good with it. Do you but, get what I mean? But isn't it two degrees though? So we can embrace it. Yeah. But we can also encourage other stuff as well. Yeah. But don't look at me like that. She's like, yeah, saying, yeah, 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 I hear you. Because you could go to the gym, even if it's once a week, yeah? Mm. Or you could do extended walks. And you do walk in anyway, because yeah. you do the school drop my, and yeah, stuff. Drop my son on and top. that's now part of your routine. Yeah, not I every day. <laughs> <laughs> not when it's cold. Not when it's cold. Raining. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be doing it if it's cold if it's raining. I ain't doing nah, that. the school the runs are mate. Yeah, because it's, it's hard. It's difficult, isn't it? It's, it's a hard I, one. I've just become a gym babe. Yeah, like three months I've seen. Ago. I've seen you. Work, yeah. yeah, I've seen your stories. So I was. Got, I've got some underlying health issues that mm -hmm. um, I basically become really anemic because of that. Ended up in hospital having blood transfusions. I was wow. like severely unwell. They said to me that my HB was so low that I was about to go into heart failure. So it was like wow. it was bad, um, <sighs> and I'm still waiting surgery now. Mm -hmm. Three months that three four months down the line, I'm still waiting for surgery. Um, but they've got on top of it. They've given me medication. And once they addressed my anemia, I was like, wow, is this what it feels like mm. to have red blood cells bouncing around your body? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd got so used to it. Mm. Like, I didn't realise how unwell I'd been for quite a long time. And one well, of so the... how long was your iron low for? Because I've had this thing before when yeah. my doctor was like, are you feeling okay? I was like, yeah, why? Anyway, your, your iron is so low. So I was compensating really well. I think I'd probably been anemic for a good year. And how do you know that you was anemic? For Breathlessness, dizzy, palpitations, just feeling really weak. Like one flight of stairs, you'd feel like you're going to pass out. Mm. Um, but I, I've been coping with it really well. I've been managing it really well. I got really addicted to ice. I kept eating ice by the bucket loads mm. like when I tell you I was getting slushies <laughs> I was just crunching on ice and it's your body's way of trying to like oh you that it's boost your something. metabolism yeah, up yeah. and let you know that something's not right yeah and um I was at work one day and um I, was, I said I was on an ambulance so I said to my crewmate I really don't feel good like I feel like I'm just gonna fall asleep couldn't stay awake and um I went inside got a blood test done and they were like we're admitting you right now you need a blood transfusion like I was critically yeah. unwell really really unwell and once they got on top of that I just found like I got all this energy back mm -hmm. and I got a little health kick 
So where I hadn't been able to walk and run and do anything, like now I was like, right, I'm going to get in the gym. I'm going to get serious about my health. And so for the last three months, I wouldn't say every day, but four or five times a week, I go to the gym. Well done. But my, thank you. But my initial thoughts and feelings about gym were so similar to yours. I didn't like people looking at me. So now I go late. Mm -hmm. I go to, I go 24 hour gym. I'll go at like 11 o'clock at night. When there's no one there. Because mm -hmm. I don't like people looking at me. I don't want to feel like there's men go. Yeah. And to be fair, my gym is quite good. Like, okay, they good. are quite respectable. It's yeah. like a mixed gym, various ages and, and genders and stuff. But a lot of my issues with the gym were similar to yours. Yeah. But I literally forced myself and I kept going and I kept going. And now I'm addicted. Like, I mm. love going to the gym. So... I would say even if you can't go to the gym, walking is great anyway. Yeah, like if yeah. you're walking every day and stuff, then... I think it just does something for your... It gives you some endorphins. Yeah, it makes you... Like, I'm not going to lie, yeah. Walking, literally to and from school, it's like 20 minutes either way. That's a 40-minute walk. But and the fresh air as well. The fresh air. Yeah. You see people... Like, maybe I'm going to try and do a speeded mum walk one day and just get them <laughs> steps in. Sweat a little bit. But literally, you do be sweating. I wore my thick coat one day. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sweating. But you're actually doing some physical work. Whereas before, yeah. I was literally just jumping in the car, dropping to nursery, sitting at the desk, doing work, eating shit during the day, mm. and then not really being healthy. That Most I'll do is run up and down to collect packages. That was it yeah. from the door. Do you get what I mean? So, no, I'm really happy that you were able to, like, go to the gym and you're happy with like the level and the progress that you're doing it at yeah because I feel like with the gym you can uh, put so much pressure on yourself especially if you see like other gym bays and gym bods in the body mm -hmm. the gym and they're like doing all of this stuff in it or, or even online where people are like oh yeah I'll go hard in the gym go hard or go home yeah. and it's like yeah. every single blessed day you're seeing something about the gym yeah it's a lot of additional pressure but I started out walking on the treadmill for like 15 minutes mm -hmm. like I wasn't running I was, I was doing 15 minute walks. Then I was going on the exercise bike and doing maybe like 10 minutes on that. I was just building it up. Now I'm running for half an hour. Mm. I'll run for half an hour. Sometimes I'll cycle for half an hour too. Like I do like an hour cardio yeah. straight, which when I started, so you shouldn't be put off by what other people are doing in there. Cause everyone had a day one, right? Everyone mm. started somewhere. Um, it's small steps until <clears throat> you get to where it's not a race. No. Like we don't need to compete yeah. with anyone else. Everyone, every single person, I always tell myself, every single person in this gym has got their own issue. Mm -hmm. They will have their own flaw. They will have something that they perceive as unattractive or whatever. But you you just have to remember that we're all in here trying to get healthy. Like, that's the main thing, right? Yeah. Is that you're trying to get healthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The body that comes afterwards is a bonus it's a for bonus. me. Yeah, I just yeah. want to be healthy. That's yeah, my main yeah. thing. I hear that. I hear that. Okay. So what kind of, what kind of tips would you give to people who are like maybe like myself actually talk to me girl <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> who might be looking in the mirror saying you know what I'm not really happy although I look in the mirror I'm okay nothing <laughs> do you know what guys nothing fazes me I, it's just a tum and that's just something I can't, I've got stretch marks and everything I, I can't control it I gave birth in it what mm. do you want me to do it's life that's why I'm not coming to kill myself. But mm. the people who are like looking in the mirror, they might have like a, a lack, body dysmorphia, or they might have like a lack of like self-belief or just like they're not happy with the body they see. What like would you say to them to like give them that motivation to make a difference or make a change? I think it starts out with self-worth. Everything comes back to your self-worth, your confidence, your self-esteem, right? So if you, there's people that... I don't want this to sound bitchy. It's going to sound bitchy anyway, but there might be people that aren't the prettiest looking people. Mm -hmm. You see how confident they are. Mm -hmm. Like literally, there's some girls out there that are quite big, aren't the prettiest in by terms of like modern beauty, but they have so much confidence. They ha are full of self-worth. And it really does start with that inner work mm -hmm. until you can accept who you are and stop comparing, because if you keep comparing yourself to everyone else, you're never going to be happy with who you are. Yeah. You've really got to accept yourself and understand that beauty is a thing that really belongs to youth. Like, yeah. we all grow old, we all get wrinkles, we all go no, grey, we lose hair, yeah. we all, boobs will sag, bum will sag. Yeah. Men, they, they all get that middle age spread. They get it easy in the 20s and 30s, right? But they all get that middle age spread as well. Beauty is temporary. 
Yeah. It's not a permanent thing. None of us are promised to be pretty forever. Even if you have surgery, even if you have fillers, let's look at like people that are older that have had so much work done. Sharon they, Osbourne. They don't. She lost bare weight though. They don't. I'm, I'm going to say it. They don't look good. They yeah, don't. She doesn't they look don't. good. The ones that age naturally usually actually look, look a lot better. better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. Katie Price, okay. Oh, the oh, poor babe. We love. She I was love Katie Price. So I love Katie, but naturally God. stunning when yeah. she was young. Yeah. And she, I think some of the work to a point, she mm. looked it's good. Right. Yeah. Now she's gone to Overboard. that kind of Joan Collins kind of really overdone, and I I do love her. I think yeah. she's like she's been through a lot. Mm. I like I do feel for her. She's had a hard life, but she's overdoing it now. Yeah. And like. I think you just need to stop sometimes and take a look in the mirror and say, is, is this really worth, like, not leaving my house or spending 10 hours? Like, there's young girls that have dysmorphia to the point they don't want to walk out the door. Like, mm. it's sad. It's really sad. You've got to do the inner work. You've got to heal whatever wounds you have from your past, your childhood. Um, get counselling if you've got, you know... I think a lot of women have confidence issues because of abuse as well. Mm. I think there's a lot of women that feel like inadequate or you know like how women get the glow up right after mm -hmm. a breakup mm. it's usually because they was in a really unhappy situation yeah. and when they're out of that they're like Woo! Yeah, yeah they yeah, find yeah, themselves yeah. again isn't it and they yeah. want to do stuff for themselves so I think for myself I think um spending quality time with yourself on yourself is really important just for your own mental and also just what your energy gives out yeah in that so whether that's going to the gym, whether that's having a massage, whether that's taking yourself out and doing something nice, I think those things are really important. Yeah, to and self. I meditate, I journal, mm. I do my gratitude every day. Mm -hmm. I started praying, which is something I hadn't been doing for years and years. I've started praying, and like I've started to like really tap into my my core self. Mm. Like, and when you start tapping into your core self and loving who you are at such a core level. The exterior doesn't actually matter. Mm -hmm. And what people say about you online, about your exterior, also doesn't matter. Because you're then just like... <laughs> this, this could all Lit go... Bam. Yeah. yeah. Say that again. Yeah. This yeah. could all go tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I could, be in a, I could be in a car crash and I could be disfigured, right? Yeah. I want, I, 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 oh, my heart goes out to people that have been through burns and all that kind of stuff. Because it must be so difficult. Yeah. But that's not going to change who I am. Inside, Inside your you core. need to be, yeah. yeah you need to know what who matters. you are. Correct, yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question? Go on then, babe. We try and before wrap, wrap it up. up. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is your guys' views on, like, body shaming, though? Because I have two views on body shaming, that being a positive and a negative. Mm. Yeah, I think there's, there's, like, a thin line in between it. So, as you mentioned... The reason why those guys were getting triggered is because they didn't have a response about men being men. They were, you know what? <laughs> You're fat. <laughs> go gym. That was their response. <laughs> it's a go-to, isn't it? Your yeah, mum yeah. or your yeah, fat? Your yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the two <laughs> comments that every <laughs> argument is your yeah, mum, yeah, yeah. your fat. Like, come on. I could do with the mum one. Your mum, in it. Your mum. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's even dumb because you don't know my mum. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it means nothing to me. But when I was thinking about this effort, talking about it, I literally thought, like, I don't know if I have a such a very strong view in it, but to be fair, like, I can see the positives and the negatives behind it. And I don't know if this is from a cultural background. Yeah. I can see the positives and the negatives. Okay. Caribbean people love to tell you when you look fat. Yeah. Because they see it in different views. One view is that they know that you're living well because you are fluffy. And the other bit is they're just going to say what's on their mind and it's going to let you know. Mm. You put on weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah. that can that can motivate you to be like, nah, I need to do something that does not make sense. <laughs> it can motivate you, yeah. <laughs> the other side, especially like for young children, if they hear that as a child, you're roundy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking about the stuff that you hear. He round. Look at the face. <laughs> Look at full, the face. Full, 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 full. Oh my god. <laughs> All of that, yeah. <laughs> How does a child feel about that, for example? Even an adult. Like, if, if someone was to see me go, boy, your face is full. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I've heard it a few times. I'm just like, it is what it is. I'm living well. But do you know what I mean? There's, that, there's pros and cons yeah, to it. Yeah. What, do you, yeah. what do you guys think about it? 
for me, I think there's, there, there is a line. I think if you want to genuinely reach out to someone and say to them on a personal level... Like, would you tell your brethren if they've got too much, if they've got too weight and be like, you're looking very plumpish? I would never say to, I would never say to anyone, you're looking fat mm. or you're looking... Bit. If someone acknowledges their self, I, I really need to lose weight, then I'd be like, babe, go gym. Mm. Let's get your diet. Like, I'd be giving them positive reinforcement to enable them to go and do that for themselves mm. I think yeah you can kind of say things in a really nice kind of loving way but at no, the same time it's, like never, it's never it's <laughs> never really not well received it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And weight is something that people freely comment on so like mm. I remember my nan's not with me anymore but I'd go and see my nan she'd be like oh you put on weight <laughs> <laughs> that older generation I do know. not care yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I know your nan <laughs> like okay thanks and then, it's like, <laughs> and then you're home, you're thinking about like, it. Like, like, your fat. If na Nan always says I'm beautiful, oh, and now yeah, she's calling me, fat. I must be fat. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, your body size is like the first go-to thing, isn't it? You've lost weight. You put yeah. on weight. Everyone freely talks. Oh, you look really well. You've lost weight. Like, I've been getting that a lot lately, right? You yeah. look really well. You've lost weight. Well, so what did I look like before, before then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Where are we going with this? Yeah. <laughs> it can be taken two ways. I think um, if you wanna, if you wanna address it, don't be doing it online, right? There's no need to mm. drag people down and weaponize their weight yeah, yeah, against yeah. them because I think you're not gonna make someone go to the gym. Like them comments you got haven't made you go. Oh, better eat a salad for lunch and go to the gym today. <laughs> Hell no. You know? I looked in the mirror and I was like, girl, you're highly blessed and favoured. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I've been called fat and had yeah. horrible comments. That didn't make me want to go to the gym. No. It it's didn't, rude. It, didn't. it is rude though. I went to the gym because I wanted to go to the gym yeah, for yeah. myself. It was nothing to do with what anyone else said about like, me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about delivery as well then, isn't it's it? De yeah. Delivery. Because, because even if someone was to DM you and be like, oh, I've seen you on this podcast for the last how many months and you you have like Has someone done actually no oh okay it's just the example is very specific i don't know but i'm just saying isn't it someone yeah. could do that with yeah, their yeah. fast self because no one asked for your opinion but someone <clears> could <throat> actually <throat> say something like that mm. and actually just dm you yeah? yeah yeah and they could say oh do you know when um one of those girls from love island i swear she had like a lump somewhere and some and some people were saying you should get that checked out because that might be bloody blah blah blah, and it actually was a health problem mm. yeah. that people bring into her attention. So there's another aspect of it as well, isn't it? Because someone could bring something to your attention mm -hmm. in a DM and be mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I'm not being funny or nothing, but bloody blah blah blah," and that informs you, and then it will make you act on that. It depends if it's being weaponized to bring someone down or not. If you're doing it from a good place, then you. Delivery is everything, right? Mm. You can say anything to someone as long as you say it in a kind, compassionate way. But I think there's some things that it doesn't matter how you, how nicely you say it. So you're not going to tell your best friend that she's put on weight? No, if my friend said to me, do you think I've put on weight? And I genuinely believe she had. I say, yeah, maybe a bit, babe, if, if that's what I so thought. So you're so nice because you're just saying it like maybe a bit. But if yeah. it wasn't a bit, what are you saying then? If she'd put a lot of weight on, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. But I'd say, are you happy with the weight you've put on or do you want to lose it? What if she's with a feeder? Where that feeder <laughs> needs to go. Because they'll have you all fed up and then they'll be running That's the streets with some skinny girls. This, so, is, the, this is what I'm on. saying. Oh, guys, you'll bring it <laughs> no, on to a tangent. That's what I'm saying, Can though? I just say, yeah, if I'm concerned about any of my friends, I've learned now to just shut your mouth. I ain't saying shit. I'm not saying nothing. You know why I'm not saying nothing? Because I'm not trying to make no one cry behind closed doors. Because you guys know how my delivery are. If you're my mm. friends, you know me. I can be like, she's one of like, she's like my sister that I didn't have, but my sister <laughs> and an aunt and a sister and my friend and everything. <laughs> like, so we can, I can be straight have with her honest, and be like, yeah. mm. what you're doing, Leash, I don't rate that. Sort the fuck out. And mm. she knows what I'm talking I've about. I've got friends the same. Yeah. One she but can be real, there real are with. friends. That you have that they're still sensitive your friends, and that, yeah. but you're gonna be sensitive. Mm -hmm. So let me just shut up and let you do what you're doing. <laughs> if they ask you though, if they ask me, it's different. If you say yeah, to me, "Oh, right. Charles, what do you think about me? Like I've put on weight. Like, what do you think? Would you recommend?" I'll be like, "Babe, I've been meaning to tell you this, but I just haven't said it to you because mm. I don't know how you're gonna receive the mm -hmm. information." But I'm not gonna willingly. I might tell my other friends that I'm concerned mm. or I'm worried or this is happening. Can somebody else do it? Because I just know my delivery is not the receivable delivery that anyone's going to take akin to. Mm. So I'd rather just stay out of it. I'm going to act deaf, dumb and blind. I haven't seen nothing. I'm not involved. I think it's difficult. It's hard, isn't it? Because 
because Shells knows me for a while, everyone kind of knows when I'm really stressed out because you lose weight. I lose a lot of yeah. weight. Yeah. Yeah. So I will show that. I may not even sound <clears throat> like I'm stressed. I can communicate with you normal, but mm. my body is doing otherwise. My eating habits are just doing otherwise. So you would show it. So I know that when people come to me and going, oh, you've lost a lot of weight, it kind of worries me a bit mm. because then I'm like, damn. And it's because I want to, I suppose, hide the fact that I am feeling stressed or overwhelmed about a situation. Mm. But then because my appetite's then affected and then now I've lost the weight and you can't hide yourself if you're around people, you're like, damn, you know, and there's nothing really you can do about it. So it is sometimes about delivery, but sometimes it's always, it's, I see it as a wake up call sometimes. So yeah. if someone tells me you've lost a lot of weight, like what's going on? Sometimes it wakes up something in me and I'm like, fix up. Mm. Like, how are you losing this much weight to the point where you've had about three people tell you, why well, you've lost a lot of weight? Mm -hmm. Clearly, I need to kind of try and do something now. I need to try and up eat, um, up doing what I'm eating or... No, but do you know what I mean? I will be conscious with it, yeah? Because now I'm going to change. Because I don't want to be like, oh, you're right. Because you're now looking concerned that I'm mm. looking yeah. this thin. And I that's think a problem. A little, a little weight loss and a little weight gain in your friends, like, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. we know women fluctuate, right? Our bodies change, like, monthly, mm -hmm. weekly sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, our bodies are just going through cycles all the time. But if you see your friend drastically gain a lot of weight or drastically lose a lot of weight, are you their friends if you're not... If you, are, you, are you their real friends if you're not going to say to them, yeah. baby, are you okay? Mm. Like, I'm concerned about you. You don't even have to make it a weight thing, mm. but you're going to know if your friend's gone from, like, size 8 to a size 20, mm. something's yeah, either mentally wrong or, or physically, physically wrong, wrong. Yeah. and you should be, like, as of someone that genuinely loves them and cares about them. Interesting, guys. But I think, like, if you're putting half a stone on, no. Shh. Yeah, just keep it sharp. Yeah, yeah I'm going to keep it sharp. <laughs> I'm not a shit friend you'd buy. You're gonna the way. tell me, I know you're gonna tell me that. I will 100 percent tell you. There are certain friends I'm hundred percent tell, yeah. but there's others that I know that are maybe more sensitive. And if I speak, especially because it's shells, we know there's gonna be some form of something. Guys, basically, this means that she doesn't know about delivery. Yeah, there we go. My <laughs> delivery is just one auto-tune the same. But anyway, Zoe, you've got some new things happening. Yeah. What's going on for you? What's going on for me? So <clears throat> um Obviously, I'm a paramedic. That's my that's my main job. Um, but I am starting up a new charity project called the You Matter Project, where we're creating um, care packages for women that we're going to be delivering into various settings, refuges, hospitals, antenatal wards, parents that um, have children in cancer wards and stuff. So we're mm -hmm. going to be going into these places, giving them little gift boxes with positive affirmations, oh, really good. crystals, some essentials working with Peckham Soup Kitchens. We're yeah. also going to be giving out some, like, food packages as well. Um, so I've got that going on. Got some new content coming, which I can't really speak about at the moment. Yep. When you see um, it, you see it. We'll tag, we'll share, yeah, all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, here. Um, doing some behind-the-scenes backstage footage with artists as well. So I've got a little backstage interview coming up at the O2 soon. So it's exciting. And also going to be acting next year. Ooh, I saw that yes, and I was ooh. like, well done. Yeah. yeah. So just pushing the boundaries, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of a jack of all trades, master of none. I'll just do a bit of anything <laughs> <laughs> at this point and be a mum and have yeah. my own business. But yeah. I like to be busy. <laughs> love it, love it. Booked and busy. We love Sounds that. Amazing. Let the people know where we can find you. Um, It's at <clears throat> Zoe Gemma Louise on Instagram and TikTok, I think, is the same as well. But I really use TikTok. You jump on there yeah, on I put TikTok. one video on there it's on like 35k views yeah jump on there I'm That's telling like you it. for your business it mm. will do well and anything else that you're doing really people on TikTok are just it's good vibes Instagram's like they'll tell you the truth vibes, right? Insta is bad vibes right now mm. TikTok you can come on there in your headscarf like you've just woken up they want to yeah. see the real Gemma yeah. they want to see the real shells they want to see the real Zoe they want to yeah. see the real everybody do you get what I mean mm. so TikTok is where it's at nice. think okay. about it yeah, no, mm. do it. Don't think about it. Do, do it. it. Right. Do it. TikTok. We're here. TikTok. We're not even getting paid for that. That's free promo to yeah. TikTok. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, guys, a drip punch, guys. If you want your um, cocktails, and make sure you check them out on Instagram. I've been drinking, as you can tell. Um, I'm in sippies. I'm in waves. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Zoe, for joining thank us on this girls. episode. Thank make you. sure you subscribe. <laughs> hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And we are out. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>